What is going on guys, Payne here today, back with another video. And before we get started, I just want to state that not everything I will say will be 100% correct. I may make mistakes, so don't rely on all the information I give you. If I do make mistakes, I will correct this in the comments or the description. So make sure you look out for those. So I've been putting this off for quite a while. I've been wanting to start a Lua exploiting tutorial for quite a while. And I've been delaying it over and over. So finally, I got around to it and I decided to do it. So today, what we're going to look at is a simple Lua auto farm for the Clicking Legends game right here. So before we get started, if you guys are into the channel, don't forget to subscribe and thumbs up the video and turn notification if you guys want to learn how to make your own next. So before we get started, we have to pick up the Sentinel winner. This is the Sentinel winner. I'm just going to heart this comment. I will contact you on this group. If you see this video, make sure you contact me if I haven't contacted you just yet. So this is the person right here that has won the Sentinel giveaway. And this is a totally random person. I just scrolled random. So congratulations, dude. I will contact you to get your email and we'll send you a Sentinel license key. Anyway, if you guys are early to my video, as always, I released a promo code. The promo code for this video is going to be remote spike, like so. Just do the capture. And once you do the capture, you'll get free Robux on my RBXGG website where you can get free Robux by completing offers. All right, so let's get right into it. What are the requirements to make an auto farmer in most cases? So what you will need for this auto farmer and most of them, you will need a script executor. If you guys don't have a script executor, I highly recommend purchasing Sentinel. If you guys don't have Sentinel, link is in the description and on the website right here. Simply press purchase and it's $15. Once you press purchase, you're going to need another thing. If you head over to tools right here, you'll see remote spy by autumn. You want to download this remote spy because this is what we'll be using in most cases to create an auto farmer. You want to press download again. You want to open this up as you guys can see credits to all these people right here for editing and improving it you simply want to select it all and just copy it like so the next thing you want to do you want to join up your roblox game Right, so you want to open up your sentinel like i did and you want to paste in your script what i highly recommend is that you join this game and test it for yourself because the best way to learn especially exploiting and how to do things is by trial and error so what i recommend you do is try to replicate my steps and what i do in order to receive the same result or even better if you want to challenge it a bit more so either way what you want to do you want to press f9 this will open up your developer console right here this is part of roblox you don't need to execute any scripts for this so this will output everything that we'll need also i'm not really sure what's going on with this black pop up here the game does that it's really weird and ugly but either way, the next thing you want to do, you just want to press execute on this. So once you execute that script, you will start outputting here every time the client calls to the server with a remote. So you may be wondering, what is a remote? A remote is an event that will call from your client to tell the server that you've just done something. So this is the way that the server knows that you've just completed an action. This is scripted somewhere in the game and you will tell the server to award you, for example, clicks. So that's why there's filtering enabled. So you can't just edit the clicks and boom, you're rich, you're sending rich. So that's what happens. That's how a remote event works. It talks to the server using events and arguments in that event. Tell you what you've just done. And that's obviously scripted on the server and the server will know what to respond with so if you guys click if i click this right here to gain myself some points because that's how you play the game you guys will see a remote event gets fired now this remote event is stored in replicate storage modules network remote event so let's open up dex real quick so if you open dex up we follow this path we'll scroll down to replicate the storage right here next part is modules and then network and if you look at network right here you guys will see there's something called remote event just like this if this is a remote event you'll be using a fire server on it a fire server will basically fire this remote with the arguments that you tell it if it's a remote function you'll be using invoke server so you don't want to use the invoke server on remote event because that won't work so use fire servers on remote events and invoke server on on remote function there are two different things all right so how do we fire this remote like the server has just done? so what most people will try to do is right click the remote and call remote like i've done right here and they will try to put in the click remote this will error it will not work so don't bother doing that that doesn't work because the arguments are broken and it's not fixed so hopefully someone fixes that soon the best way to always get used to scripting especially is don't try to be lazy and use other people's work you will never learn so you want to do try and error even if you error keep trying until it succeeds because that's how you receive the best experience and that's how you will learn really quickly and the satisfaction that comes after it once you've got something to work is insane so i highly recommend that you do script this let's script it like i said we're gonna open a new tab right here all we have to do is copy the path right here so basically what we want to do is write down this path so first thing we need to tell it that it's game so basically roblox and then we want to use services don't don't do this don't do this straight away some people like jailbreak will make this random so basically it's just calling straight to the client one so what you want to do is do get service like this and then put your replicated storage in here so what this will do will call to the service instead so this would the service one will never change from this name personally i don't like using get service like this what i just do personally is just do this and then do replicated storage and some people might think oh this is uglier but you don't have to keep spamming get service non stop you just do it once basically either way both way works i like this one it's much easier to type and much shorter so you can use either one you want so after that we're in replicated storage now we need to go to modules network remote events so we're going to copy the path modules network remote event all right so once you make the path to the remote event you need to fire server this event so how you do this you do colon 
fire server like this so make sure you keep every single capital if there's a capital in a path you need to keep that because it's capital sensitive so if you type that without a capital it will error and if you type fire server without capital it will error so right now you said semicolon fire server so this will fire server this remote event right here and to do that you just do this so this will fire server the remote event but now if we do that nothing will happen because it has an argument as well and you may be wondering well how do i add the argument so if normally it doesn't have an argument it looks a bit like this that means you can just find the remote and you'll do the rest but if it has an argument it mainly means that that remote can do multiple things so right now we know that you can do click so we'll just copy that all we have to do is put a string in here and type in click like so it's that simple so once you've done all of this let me just stretch this out so you guys can see so if we click this right here you guys will see we'll earn points now if we fire this we'll also earn points without clicking that so what does this mean it means that we can actually put this in a loop so we'll keep spamming this so before you go and spam all of this there's actually a rate limit on the server on how fast you can click so if i click really fast some of these won't get accounted for but it doesn't matter our auto farmer is going to do the best job of best efficiency and everything so what we have to do for this is simply put it in a while wait do so what this will do is while waiting that amount of time do the following and end so if you do this you cannot stop this once it's on you cannot stop it but the only way to stop it is by leaving the server basically you could ask to break it but we'll get into that in another video right now just think of it as you can't stop it so how do we make it a toggle well this is pretty simple we remove this pass right here create the global and then we tell it whether that global is on or not if the farmer should run and for this we'll use a loop and an if statement so a rookie mistake that everyone makes they use the global like this so they will do global farmer equals true so what this will do this will create a global that's exactly what you want to do but this global right here will allow the game to detect it so the game can actually see that you just create the global in the game so basically what we want to do we want to use the exploit global environment so this will not get detected by the game all we have to do is get game like this is that easy so this is get global environment and this will use the exploits one so this will not get detected by the game and then we're saying that get global environment the farmer equals true so in this case our farmer should run now how do we tell the farmer i want you to loop through this whilst this is on again we do a while wait do like this and we want to end this so always when you're doing something with while we do if statements you want to add an end after it so now we need to add a check to see if get again pharma is equal to true then i want it to run you don't need to add a check if it's off because obviously it's not going to do nothing if it's off so you don't need to add extra code for that so we're going to do if get again dot pharma so this is saying if get global environment dot pharma so if this equals equals to true so it's compared to true then do the following run this code so obviously we're using if again, so we need to tell it to end like so. Right, so once you have the code written down like this, because get game farmer is equal to true by default, this will run. So let's just execute this and you guys will see that it will start spamming. So you need to go back to the game and click it once because I'm not really sure why it does this. It just stops working sometimes. But you guys can see it's automatically going up like so. It's going really fast and that's exactly how you make a farmer. Now, you don't want to execute this code twice because what will end up happening is if you execute this code twice, you will uh, override all the code. So you can just comment this out like this. Or you can just remove the code entirely. And to turn it off, you just switch this to false like that. And once you do this, it will turn off as you guys can see. And that's how you turn off and turn on your auto farmer. It's that simple. As you guys can see, again, I turned it on. It stops, just click once. I'm not really sure why. As you guys can see, that works really well. And it's spamming the remotes from the client to the server to tell it to click. And the reason this stops randomly is because the server is rate limiting the amount of clicks, but you'll carry on after it stops for like a good two seconds and it just repeats this steps over and over. As you guys can see, my remote spy is getting flooded, so this means it's working. So if I want to turn this off, like I said, turn it to false and you will automatically turn off instant. And this brings us to the end. That's how you create a Lua farmer. It's pretty simple. It's nothing too complicated. It's just a loop, an if statement, and firing the remote. It's that easy for most games. But as this, some games will hash their remotes and so on. We'll get into that later on. But this is the basics of exploiting. Now that you know how to do it, you can use this knowledge and create your own auto farmers and even use what you've learned from this video and create even more advanced stuff and so on. And that's how you learn Lua. I'm not an expert at Lua, but I know the basics and I can teach it to you guys. And I'll see you guys in the next video with another tutorial. Peace.